Hi guys, and welcome to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today is all about saving, how to save your Studio One songs properly, because there's a couple of very powerful options available to us, but they can be a little bit confusing at first. In particular, we want to look at one of the most powerful yet underrated features of Studio One, in my opinion, which is the save version feature. But first of all, let's talk about the classic save options before we get there. Let's start with the most straightforward one, which is going to be file and save. Save would pretty much do what you expect, it just updates the Studio One song that you currently have opened to your recent version. However, keep in mind that this doesn't necessarily uh, take care of all the files of your song, because audio clips such as this right here that I've used in my song, those aren't saved within the actual Studio One.song file. To understand that a little bit better, let's just look at the way that a Studio One song folder is structured. So this is my finder window right here. And this is the song that I currently have opened. And as you can see, it's not just a song file. This is what gets saved if you use file and save. It also consists of the media and samples folder. So if you want to collaborate with somebody or you want to send off your um, song to a mix engineer or producer, it's not enough to just include the .song file. You need to think of these files also. There's a couple of ways that can be achieved. First of all, you could go to pool and then right click and use copy external files. This will copy all of the external files that might be in a different location than your song folder and store them as a copy to the media folder. That way you make sure that all of the files that you need on top of your .song file are being included. We also have a preference in Studio One under locations to always ask to copy external files when you're saving your song. But by far the best way to go, and that's also why it's one of the golden rules of saving in Studio One, is to always use save to new folder if you want to back up an archive or send your song to somebody else and you need to make sure that they get all the files they need. Otherwise you might run into the situation that they try to open your song and there's a couple of files missing. Let's do this together once so you really understand it. If that's your only takeaway from this video, it has already been worth it. So we want to save this song with everything that it contains and archive it to our backup. Let's go to File, Save to New Folder, navigate to the location that we want, in my case desktop is fine, and now just specify a name uh, for the song folder and the song. If you leave that song here or not, it really doesn't matter. Um, Studio One will add the extension if needed. So let's just call that Demo Song, hit OK. And when we look at the finder, what we get as a result, it's this beautiful folder here, which contains not just the .song file, but also the media and samples folder, the bounce folder and whatever might be in your pool. All right. So this is the one and best way to make sure that all of the files needed for the song are in one place. There's also an autosave option that you find in the preferences. And that's also very good to know. So Studio One Preferences Locations, here you're going to find an option to enable autosave, which is just going to trigger the usual save command every five minutes, every 10 minutes, whatever interval you choose here. Next one is Save As. Save As is pretty much exactly the same thing as save, but instead of overriding your current version, you get another song version that you can give a new name. But you have to keep in mind once again that this does not save your external media files that you might be referencing. So in many ways, Save As is really just good for saving alternative song versions, such as uh, in brackets, more bass, less EQ, less low cut, final, 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 final version. But we have a much better option to cover these kind of use cases. And I want to show you that next. Have you ever run into this issue where you would open up a song folder and you have all these different song files and you have no idea which one is the most current one? Well, the save and restore version functions here solve this issue very nicely. With this workflow, we just have one main .song file in our song folder and we can access all the other alternative versions that we made along the way with restore version. And here we see them not just with the title and their last modified date, but also with a descriptive text that can be pretty long and tells you a lot more about the actual song file than the file name could. Alternatively, you don't have to use restore version. You can also go to Studio One's start page and then right click your song and load the alternative song versions right from here. There's two ways you can work with save new version in Studio One. You can work with them incrementally or in alternative song versions. 
Let's start with the second one, the alternate song version. This is perfect if you don't want to touch your current progress, you're happy with what you currently have, but you want to have the freedom to experiment around with it. And if that doesn't work, you just want to go back to the previous version. Let me give you an example of this. So we have a finished production here. It sounds like this. And let's say I want to make more of a chill version of this, kind of like a lo-fi beat almost at half the tempo. But I just want to try that out. I don't want to lose what I already have. And if it doesn't work, I want to go back. Well, then we can go ahead and just lower down the song tempo by half. And this is going to cause, obviously, an enormous amount of time stretching here on the audio tracks. But because we have this new time stretch algorithm, tape, meaning that no quantization happens to the actual audio whatsoever, we get to preserve the original audio quality of the files entirely, but still get that nice lo-fi touch because it's going to be way pitched down now. To give you an idea, I have this impact slash downlift sound here. And let's check out what that would sound like with time stretch drums. It's not very pleasant, right? And now I'll listen to that with time stretch tape. I think that's way cooler. Let's add that to the other track as well to give it the same vibe. Listen to it. All right, very cool. And let's listen to that in context. Right, if you compare that to uh, what we had previously, it sounds like this. obviously way different right so let's say we want to have that as an alternative song version now but we want to keep what we had before well that's when we can work with the alternate song version so go to file save new version and tick off this box that says incremental version so you save the current state as an alternative version and you continue working on the original document the original document being demo song right now and this version would be half tempo style or whatever and watch what happens as I hit OK I'm still on the demo song and when I close this without saving and reopen it, then it seems as if the progress is lost. But when I now access the restore versions, there I can find that half tempo style song version that I just uh, saved and I can just um, pull that up with a double click. And now it's demo song half tempo style. So yeah, completely different style. If I want to make changes to that, I can just override the half tempo style file that I have currently loaded just with file and save. That would be just updating the currently loaded song file. And as soon as I want to go back to the original, it's as easy as clicking on restore version, loading up the original with a double click. Don't save the changes for now. And we're back in this version. Now with incremental, this would be something that I do as I'm mixing this. So let's say that I make the beat a bit louder and then I would use save version and call this I made the beat a bit louder. And as soon as I'm going to save that with the incremental version box ticked, you see that the song name has been updated to demo song I made the beat a bit louder, which is the currently work in progress mix, so to say. So this is how you could use song versions in the incremental approach to gradually save your song, make progress, always be informed of your current uh, work in progress until it's finished.